Hi, good afternoon. In this lesson, I'll tell you about present perfect progressive tense and its usage in English language. In English, present perfect progressive. Will you shut up? Hi, folks. Be warned. This is time for English grammar studies that won't contribute into your English fluency at all. What you need instead is practical English grammar that you can apply in your daily conversations. Stay with me, and you'll be speaking more fluent English in no time. Hello everyone who watches my video blog. Thanks for tuning in and finding time for watching my next video. I can assure you, your time won't be wasted because today I'm going to highlight important aspects of using different English grammar tenses in live English conversations. But first of all, I want to give you an example. Here is a simple phrase you'd use when you have finished doing something. I've done it. This is perfect present simple, a grammar form used to describe an action that has been finished some time in the past, but the actual time of its completion isn't known. Well, so far it's all very simple and understandable, isn't it? And you shouldn't have any difficulties with using a simple phrase like I've done it. But now let's take it one step further and look at the same phrase only in passive voice this time. Just a quick reminder for those not sure what passive voice is. It's a way of describing an event without mentioning who did it. So for instance, I've done it is active voice, but it has been done is passive voice. You see, it isn't known who did it, or it's so obvious that there's no need to mention it. But say your supervisor at work knows that you've been onto something, and now you're reporting to him. You can simply say, it has been done, because he already knows that it's you who's doing it. So the phrase we're looking at now is, it has been done, or it's short form, it's been done. It's the same present perfect simple, only in passive voice. But now, now tell me honestly two things. Firstly, how many times you've got tongue tied when speaking English because you've been trying to get the tenses perfectly correctly? And secondly, how often you've heard a phrase, it has been done, replaced by much simpler, it's done. Do you start seeing my point now? Let's have a look at a few more examples. Let's say you're going to your shift manager to brief him on your current progress. You want to tell him that you will have finished compiling the sales analysis data by 4 o'clock in the afternoon. The formal way of saying it is the following. I will have finished the sales analysis by 4 o'clock. A normal English sentence, there's nothing wrong with it. It may present difficulties though to some foreign English speakers, especially those who are struggling while speaking and are experiencing anxiety. It's not that easy to get the tenses perfectly right when speaking and making up a future perfect simple phrase, I will have finished, can get the person tongue-tied and a bit struggling while speaking. Personally, I think it's easier to say the same thing the colloquial way. I'll be finished with the sales analysis by 4 o'clock. So look at the phrase, I'll be finished. Formally, we could probably translate the phrase as I'll be killed because it's in the passive voice and when you say that I've finished, it kind of means that you are finished. However, spoken English is a different story and you don't have to go by the letter and stick to formal English. You can certainly say I'm finished instead of I have finished, I'm done instead of I've done it, and I was done instead of I had done it. Make no mistake though. I'm not saying you should mess up all English grammar that you've acquired so far and start using passive voice instead of active voice, messing up everything. All I'm saying is that when you're chatting with people in informal situations, you're much better off resembling collo colloquial English speech patterns than risking getting stuck when speaking by trying making it perfectly right. Especially if you're not perfectly familiar with all the tenses and you have to spend some time on putting things right in your mind before speaking it out loud. And of course, there's no need to change your way of speaking if saying things like the order has been shipped out now present no difficulties to you. If, on the other hand, you aren't really comfortable with things like has been, would have been, would have that and similar tongue twisters, why make it complicated for yourself? All native English speakers use simplified, more colloquial versions of those grammar forms and it's totally normal to say things like My shift is over, I'm finished today, instead of I have finished today. And the job is done now, what's next? Instead of this job has been done, what's next? I actually recall a moment when I was struggling with English tenses years ago and I wanted to get them perfectly right. So I memorized the whole English tense table with the corresponding example showing when a particular tense is used and so on. 
but I still struggled to apply that knowledge in daily conversations. And had I known about more colloquial ways of saying things, I would have made my life much easier by getting around the warehouse where I used to work. So the bottom line here is the following. Do learn English tenses. Learn how and where they are used. But when speaking everyday English, don't be afraid of using simplified language, even if it may sound grammatically incorrect at first. Okay, I'm done talking today and see you next time. Did you notice? I'm done talking. If you take it literally, it can probably confuse you. I've finished talking would make more sense, wouldn't it? But don't worry, accept these things as part of spoken English and you'll make your life much easier, believe me. Thanks for staying with me and talk to you soon again.